Last week, we took a look at an unhealthy relationship in the Bible. We saw how David's relationship with Bathsheba was characterized by secrets, lust, lies, and destruction. His bring me her now attitude was all about what David could get and take, not about what he could give. And it took a prophet confronting him for him to repent of his wrongdoings. As we wrap up our series today, this week, we are going to look at a healthy relationship found in scripture. As we read through this story, try and see if you can identify the characteristics of this relationship and see what makes it different than that of David and Bathsheba. So here's the backstory. In Ruth chapter one, we read about a lady named Naomi who was living in a foreign country called Moab. Uh, she was living with her husband and two sons. Both of her sons married women from Moab, but then her husband died and eventually so did her two sons. Naomi then decides to head back to her country because she had heard that the Lord was providing food for his people. So she began to head back with her two daughters-in-law. She urged both of them to go back to their families and to remarry, of which one did, but the other, Ruth, remained with her, pleading, don't force me to leave you. Don't force me to go back to my own people. Let me go with you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you sleep, I will sleep. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And that is where I will be buried. I ask the Lord to punish me if I don't keep this promise. Only death will separate us. Ruth was determined to take care of her mother-in-law and did not want her to be alone. She was committed. She didn't turn and walk away from her, but she loved and honored her. Right off the bat, we see that Ruth's character was good. In this time when most of you are not in relationships yet, it's time to focus on your relationship with God and growing your character. Ruth had a great character and we can too. Let's continue. In Ruth chapter two, verses one through three, we read that there was a rich name by Boaz living in Bethlehem. That's Ruth's new home with Naomi. Boaz was one of Naomi's close relatives from her family on her husband's side. One day, Ruth said to Naomi, Hey, I think I will go to the fields. Maybe I can find someone who will be kind to me and let me gather grains and that they leave in their field. Naomi said, fine daughter, go ahead. Here's what I want to point out here. Ruth was right where she was supposed to be. She was righteous. She literally had no chance of a relationship because no one was interested in marrying someone from her country but she was doing what she knew was right in caring for Naomi and followed after God. Many people might tell you guys where the best place is to meet someone, but really just follow God's call in your life. Be obedient to him and he will sort out the rest. As the story continues, Ruth ends up working and gathering leftovers from Boaz's field and guess what? He notices her, but he didn't just notice her in any sort of way. He notices her character. Then Ruth bowed very low to the ground. She said to Boaz, I am a foreigner, so I am surprised you even noticed me. And this is what Boaz says in return. I know all about the help you have given your mother-in-law, Naomi. I know you have helped her even after your husband died. I know that you left your father and mother and your own country and came here to this country. You didn't know anyone from this country, but you still came here with Naomi. As we heard last week, it is totally normal and healthy to find someone attractive. But that shouldn't be the only thing. Boaz noticed Ruth's character, and he was attracted to that. 
So what happens next? Well, Boaz begins giving Ruth things without any expectation of getting anything back. He tells Ruth that the Lord will reward you for all the good things you have done. The Lord, the God of Israel, will pay you in full. You have come to him for safety, and he will protect you. Now, this can be compared to David, who saw Bathsheba, and it was all about pleasing himself. But Boaz wanted to help Ruth, not use her. He was motivated to help her. That's something that's characterized of healthy relationships. Two people looking out for each other's best interests. In the future, if you're with someone who doesn't look out for your best interests, then know it may not be so healthy. Also, we need to be careful with our hearts too. Never to use people and to look out for their best interests as well. So listen to what happens next. Naomi gives specific instructions to Ruth on what to do, and Boaz is honored, but recognizes that there was someone else in the family that was entitled to Naomi's husband's belongings and land. It says in Ruth chapter 3, verse 10, Then Boaz said, May the Lord bless you, young woman. You have been very kind to me. Your kindness to me is greater than the kindness you have even shown Naomi in the beginning. You could have looked for a younger man to marry who was rich or or even poor, whatever, but he was younger, but you did not. And it is true that I am a close relative, but there is a man who is closer to you than I am. Here we see that Boaz was patient. Even though he liked Ruth, he gave the other person an opportunity, even though he wanted to be with her. Because love is patient. So if someone really cares about you, they will be patient with you. That's a fruit of a healthy relationship. Boaz didn't need instant gratification. He didn't have an attitude that said, bring me her now, like David did. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of things Boaz did differently, including the fact that the whole time, nothing, and I mean nothing, was secretive. He approached the other man, that relative, and this is what happened. He says to the relative, I decided to tell you about this in front of the people living here and in front of the elders of my people. If you want to buy back the land, buy it. If you don't want to redeem the land, tell me. I know that I'm the next one after you who can redeem the land. If you don't buy back the land, I will. Then he continues, if you buy the land from Naomi, you also get the dead man's wife, Ruth, the Moabite woman. And the first child will get that land. That way, the land will stay in the dead man's family. The close relative answered, I cannot buy back the land. You see, he was interested in the land at first, but when he found out Ruth was there, he was like, oh, no, 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 no. Anyway, he says, I cannot buy back the land. That land should belong to me, but I cannot buy it. If I do, I might lose my whole land. So you buy the land. So he approaches this man before all the elders to see if he wanted to redeem Naomi's husband's land. You see, in this instance, even though Boaz was a grown man, he still submitted to his authorities. To which the man agrees, but when he learned that this meant he also got Ruth, he wasn't interested, and he gave the land and all that came with it to Boaz. This meant that Boaz could legally marry Ruth. You see, healthy relationships are in the open and are submitted to authorities. This story is amazing because even when Boaz and Ruth were alone, Boaz still did not cross any boundaries. Instead, he used the time when they were alone to bless her with more food and provision. The last thing I want to point out is that he was honoring. Throughout this whole process, he honored all people, including Ruth, Naomi, 
and the close relative. So let's quickly review. Here are some characteristics from Boaz and Ruth's story. And as we go through this, we are going to compare it to the list from last week. So on one hand, we have Boaz and Ruth, a healthy relationship. On the other side, we have David and Bathsheba, an unhealthy relationship. All right, let's get into it. Boaz was attracted to Ruth's character. He wasn't just attracted to the outward appearance. He was patient. He didn't need that instant gratification, saying instantly, give me her, bring me her now. Boaz was selfless. His motivation was to help her and to give to her, not sexual sin. Boaz did everything in the open. There were no secrets. And because there was no secrets, there was no deception. Boaz submitted to authority as opposed to David, where there was no, sum no submission whatsoever. He didn't cross any boundaries, and he was honoring. And we know that last week, what David did led to lies and destruction and ultimately death. You see, love gives versus it being all about what I can get and what I can take and being led by lust. As we come to the end, this is all just to help you to be able to identify in the future if relationships you see or find yourself in are healthy or unhealthy. In all of these things, remember, you don't have to go searching for a relationship. You just have to follow what God tells you to do, and he will take care of the rest. When it is time for you to get into a relationship in the future, we pray it will be a healthy relationship. Look out for these characteristics. We pray your relationships would be characterized by patience, looking out for the other person's best interests, not secretive, but submitted to loving authorities, a relationship in the light and not in the dark, where you will honor each other. There's no perfect relationship, okay? <laughs> There's no perfect person except for Jesus, but there can be healthy relationships when two people are honoring God and honoring each other. The last thing I want to say is just remember to go to your parents and find out the rules of your house. Having an open conversation with your parents will also help you in other areas of your life. Honestly, guys, high school is just around the corner. And in an earlier teaching, we talked about how it can sometimes feel like you are drifting away from your parents. But I want to encourage you to make it a priority to bridge the gap if you can. Remember, lust takes, but love gives. May you live a life of love. Bye.